So our next entrepreneur, and, and I'm not sure about you, but my dad is here and he can attest to my uh, Hebrew school career, much of which was spent in the principal's office. <laughs> Uh, yes. I did come away I with e yes, I can attest to that. Bernie can attest to that as well. He's <laughs> known me since that. I was five. Um, I know Eparon and Mach Barrett. Pencil and paper. Thank you. That was as far as I got before they generally asked me to leave the class. <laughs> Our next entrepreneur had a similar experience. In fact, she uh, super glued a young boy's tushy to his <laughs> desk chair combo. But has, since then, has decided that she needs to turn Hebrew school upside down and create a new model. I'd like to introduce you to Anna Fuchs. I can't wait for Sunday mornings and Wednesday afternoons. I just love Hebrew school. <laughs> said no Jewish child ever. <laughs> the traditional Hebrew school model doesn't work for today's families. The Federation demographic study indicated a shocking 84% of Jewish children don't get a Jewish education at all. My name is Anna Fuchs, and Jewish Kids Groups is my solution to this problem. Jewish Kids Groups is a reimagined, reinvented Hebrew school model piloting right here in in-town Atlanta. In just three years, we've grown from serving six kids in a garage to having 121 students in the heart of Morningside. Picture this. Our unique model marries cutting-edge, innovative, full Hebrew school curriculum with a premium after-school care program. Children come to us two, three, four, or five afternoons a week. For families who need a more traditional model, we also have a robust Sunday morning program. Think, Jewish summer camp every day after school. At Jewish Kids Groups, you'll see kids learning in our experiential garden homework help from Jewish teens, and celebrating holidays together. But most importantly, you'll see them making important friendships. Research indicates it's these early childhood Jewish relationships that influence whether or not someone has a Jewish identity later in life. Our diverse community is made up of affiliated and unaffiliated families. And this is critical, because in Atlanta, two out of three Jewish families are not affiliated with a synagogue. But these families still need a way into the Jewish community, and their kids need a Hebrew school. This year, we held family celebrations and holiday programming ranging from Shabbat dinners to a singing Seder in a local community garden. 180 people. Afterward, one parent said to me, Anna, thank you. This is my first Seder in 30 years, and my first Seder ever with my 10-year-old son. You see, Jewish Kids Groups is lowering the barriers to access a Jewish education by convenient and flexible programming, and because we're a model designed for busy families with hectic schedules. We even provide transportation from select schools. But most importantly, Jewish Kids Groups is fun our kids love being there, and their parents feel good about what they're learning and the friendships they're building. Today's Jewish children are tomorrow's leaders. What does it say about the Jewish destiny that we are building if 84% aren't getting a Jewish education? How important is Jewish education? On a scale of 1 to 10, how important is Jewish education? I want you to think of that number and put a zero behind it. <laughs> and text your pledge of support. <laughs> text your pledge of support to JKG. And with your help, we will reach other 84%.
Sharks. Bernie, you with me? Yeah. Sharks. So, We're paying you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I love oh, your brand. Uh, I've got more for you, Lori. <laughs> I hope you will award the, the ticket money, the sales money from tonight to Jewish kids groups. With it, we will be able to put on nine holiday celebrations in in-town Atlanta, and you will all be invited. But Sharks, more importantly, I am looking for a partner. Jewish Kids Groups is a sustainable, replicable model, but I need help bringing it to scale. I'm looking for investors who can help me leverage this incredible market opportunity, my earned revenue stream, my smart board, and my dynamic teaching team. With your help, we can dramatically influence <laughs> the destiny of Jewish Atlanta. Thank you. I, I love your branding. It has so much positive creative energy, and it really takes something that, you know, traditionally has been kind of not a children's favorite and, and markets it to the parents. What is your background, and what, is the, what are the barriers to success if you're having so much engagement and obviously people are paying to come because you're providing a babysitting service you know for working parents as well as a Jewish education a full Hebrew school curriculum mm -hmm. yes so two you asked two questions there I'll give you the answer to both my background is uh, I have a bachelor's degree in Jewish studies and Middle Eastern studies from Emory University I have a master's degree in instructional design and technology from Georgia State which is a master's in science and education I also spent five years working at the Emory University Institute for the Study of Modern Israel. My background is, in truth, I'm an academic, I'm a researcher, I'm normally, I'm used to being buried in the books. This is a new venture for me. I'm glad you're so impressed. I'm glad it, it seems like we're so, we're, we're essentially one year old. Um, and so there's still so much growth potential. We are tapping just a tiny percent of our market. In fact, this was last weekend, we rented a booth at Virginia Highland Summerfest. Um, and it, it was incredible to see, first of all, the way, the, the, the way uh, Jewish people scanned the area and then they saw a Jewish booth and like what their reaction to that was, but also the, no, the sheer number of families who came over to me and were like, this is exactly what we've been looking for. So. So my seven-year-old uh, road tested this with me, loves your uh, online rap of teaching the uh, Hebrew alphabet, so it's very kid tested. And it, and approved. Thank I, you, Michael. So I guess the thing that, um, I guess what I'm looking at is where does it happen? I mean, you know, are you at day schools? Are you at your own facility? How, how, like, how do you deliver So again, this? our first year, we renovated the oldest Orthodox synagogue in Atlanta, Anshi Safar. We, we renovated their, their top floor, and that's the facility we've used in our first year. I'm, I'm very excited, and sorry for my board members here who I haven't yet told. We have outgrown our facility. Next year, we will need to rent additional space in another location for our Sunday program. Um, that's a temporary location. We're looking at several different models for where we can be in the future. Are you, are you self-sustaining now and you're looking for money for growth? Are you operating, like where's the economics of this? In business? our first year, right now, 40%, uh, our tuition covered 40% of our expenses. So we're okay. really in a growth opportunity phase right now. Um, Michael, to answer your other question, I don't want to say we serve public schools because we also serve private schools, but we serve non-Jewish schools. So essentially we're picking children up, we're in the heart of Morningside, Morningside Elementary, Mary Lynn, Toomer, Springdale Park Elementary, Paideia, and the Children's School. 25% uh, of our audience come to our program five days a week. Uh, for those children, Jewish kids groups and their Jewish community is their primary social community. These are children who go to public schools and yet they spend the majority of their time during the week with Jewish children. So, so what's the age? What's the age of these children? This year we served K through fifth graders and we'll grow with our oldest cohort. So you're academically approved? Pardon me? Academically approved by the state? So just to be clear, we're not a school at all. Okay. We pick children up from their local elementary schools and when school after, lets out at 2.30. Uh, okay. Okay, so did I? Oh, it's after school. We're an after school ah, Hebrew school big program. Big we're difference. open six days a week and parents pick the schedule that works for them. So you can imagine with like soccer and gymnastics and everything else going on in children's lives, uh, it's very helpful to parents to have choice. So you don't have public transportation, parents have to get the kids there? 
This is a very, very good question because the, the key to an after-school program is providing transportation. So we provide transportation in a number of ways. First of all, we get the public school buses, the public sc the school buses from public schools, to drop off uh, about a block from our site, and our counselors go and meet the school buses and bring the kids from those schools. We also have a Jewish kids group's van that provides transportation from other schools. And how do they get home? Their parents come pick them up parents at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you're teaching Hebrew, which you made a big point to make sure that I under, understood, then do you feed people, feed the fifth graders into bar and bat mitzvah programs through synagogues or? Great are, question. Great question. So our, we will grow with our oldest cohort. So this year, the oldest grade we served is fifth grade. But again, we're a brand new program. Next year, those kids will be in sixth grade and we'll serve them there as well. We are creating a, um, a, a it's still a secret, we haven't announced it yet, but we're creating a really exciting experiential bar, mitz bar bat mitzvah program. So, we're so just that's still the in the midst of that. that they would have we certainly want to provide that opportunity for all of our students, whether it's in partnership with the synagogue they belong to or whether it's um, separate. Yeah. So I told you that um, half the families we serve are unaffiliated. I think it's really fascinating that the other half of the families we serve are affiliated with the synagogue. Now, these families are using us in one of two ways. They're either using us to bolster the Jewish education their child is getting at synagogue. So for example, we have families who send their children to AA Hebrew school on Sundays and Wednesdays. And then they come to Jewish kids groups Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, the other half use us exclusively. And do you also help with regular secular homework? And well, I don't, but we have an awesome team of Jewish teens who come in from Paideia and from Druid Hills High School and a couple of the high schools in the area. They come in when they finish school at four and they do homework help with the kids. Last question. Please. Your growth, is it going to come in the same population of kids up to that age, up to fifth grade? Or are you looking for older children also? So I'm hoping, Bernie, that you and I can schedule a meeting to discuss I knew that. You were, I knew you were going to <laughs> A after this that. summer, I, I'm, I'm so thrilled that I, I was just accepted to a program called SCALE, uh, conducted by present tense in Jerusalem. I will spend s several weeks this summer studying different scaling models and figure out how to scale. But I want to tell you this. Our future, Jewish Kids Group's future. Oh, Michael. Oh, Michael. He's got all the money. Don't you cut Bernie off. <laughs> Listen to this. A a our future is not in... Our, our future is in partnering <laughs> with existing organizations. Our specialty, what we do well, our niche is Jewish education. If you think that is important, text your pledge of support right now. <laughs> our expertise is Jewish education. We want to partner with existing institutions to bring dynamic programming to in-town Atlanta. <laughs> Let's give a big Todah Rabah to Arna Fuchs. Get out your phones and text JKG to 51818 to support Anna and Jewish Kids Group. You can text any, actually that is a great question. Jenny, can they text, how long after the event can they text? As long as you want. As long as you want. So we will supply you with all the information you need to continue texting. <laughs> so our next entrepreneur, actually really quick, Lorianne. So I, I was going to impress you tonight and yeah. buy some spanks for men. <laughs> and I looked on the website and they're made for fit men. So maybe we can talk. Spanx chubbies, I think. Is the thing. <laughs> Just saying. We do not discriminate on size. I appreciate that. Neither do I. 